Here's how an ice cold beer, balloons, and a propane gas tank can tell you everything that you need to know about weather. Let go! Boom! If you really want to take a deeper dive into weather, you have to familiarize yourself with a few terms. These terms are going to be thrown at you pretty much on every flight plan that you do, so you definitely want to become comfortable and familiar with them. The number one term you're going to start with is do point. You definitely want to understand dew point and how its relationship between temperature can be very critical to your flying. You Why these numbers are important and what do they actually mean. Let go. Hey, whenever you're doing your flight planning, you may be given a series of numbers. They may tell you, of course, what's happening with the viz, what's happening with the winds. Then they're going to give you the temperature. And then immediately after that, they may tell you dew point. They may tell you something like temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, dew point, 20 degrees Celsius. What exactly is the dew point and what does it mean? In short, all a dew point is, is the temperature that the air must cool to for you to visibly be able to see moisture. That's what you want to remember. The temperature that it can, air has to cool to before you can visibly see moisture. Moisture and water molecules are in all the air around us. All the air that's up in this video in front of my face, all the air that you're breathing right now, there's water molecules in all air. And warmer air has a tendency to hold more water than colder air. But you can't see those air molecules as long as that temperature and the dew point are spread apart. So when they give you that temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and the dew point is 18 degrees Celsius or 17 degrees Celsius and there's a nice spread in between that, you won't be able to see anything. But the second they become closer and closer and closer together and that dew point starts to match that temperature, you're going to be able to visibly be able to see the water vapor and moisture in the air. One of the best ways to illustrate this and one of the most fun ways is to have an ice cold beer. Let go! Boom! We back off in that thing with our ice cold beer in our hand. And the sun is shining and smiling down on us. We having a good time. But chapter is playing. We are in that thing. We are in that thing. If you ever been in this situation at a backyard barbecue or family function, you having a good time. Everything's going well. You got that frosty glass of ice cold beer in your hand and the sun starts shining. And then maybe a few moments into it, you know what starts to happen? That glass that you hold it in your hand, it starts to sweat. You know what that sweat is? That's an example of dew point. Here's how that thing works. We all know that there's water in all air that's around us. So when you're out there kicking it in the sun, all the air that's around, there's water vapors in it. It's just like we just discussed. It's invisible. You can't see it. Nice warm temperature. But then you bring out your nice big cool cold glass of ice cold beer. And that warm air, it starts to come in contact with that glass. That glass is really, really cold. So when that warm air touches that cold glass, what happens? It starts to bring down the temperature of that air that's coming in contact with that glass. And when the temperature meets that dew point, that's when that glass starts to sweat. That's what's happening when the dew point is, is occurring in the atmosphere. So that's just an example of the backyard barbecue on your nice ice cold glass of beer. Think about that same concept happening in the atmosphere. When that warm air, as we know, heat rises. So that warm air starts to rise. And as the warmer air rises and rises, it gets cooler and cooler. And then as it starts to cool off, if that cool temperature meets that dew point temperature, then boom! Hey, that's when you get a lot of bad conditions that may be very challenging to fly in, like a lot of fog, a lot of low vis, those kinds of things. That's why you want to be cognizant of what dew point is and what the spread is between temperature and dew point. Hey, you can literally see this happen if you're kicking back at that backyard barbecue long enough, y'all playing games, having fun with the family and friends, and you see that warmer air go into the sky and it goes up and up and up and cools off and then it starts to form a cloud. That's that visible moisture forming right before your eyes. It's reaching its dew point and that's why it's doing that. Hey, boom! So a major takeaway to understanding the spread between temperature and dew point, when there's a significant spread between the two, you're more than likely going to have a great day of flying. Great visibility, no clouds in the air, no moisture or anything present. Beautiful situation for you. However, when that dew point meets the temperature and they're very close together like that and they're identical, it's going to cause very low ceilings, 
very low visibility, lots of cloud, lots of fog, and very challenging conditions for you to fly in. That's one of the main things you want to remember and be cognizant of when, they're, when you're given the temperature and the dew point following. Your brain should immediately begin to click. How close are these two together? And what could that mean for my flight plan? Lego. Hey, if that dew point and temperature are also meeting and very close together and the temperatures at a freezing point, like zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it also can lead to frost and icing kind of conditions. Be very careful and be very cognizant every time you fly between dew point and temperature and the relationship between those two measures. Let go! Boom! As we know, when dew point and temperature are close together, it can lead to low vis situations and lots of fog. If you're looking for the different types of fog that can form, there's a video on this channel covering that. There will be a link at the end of this video. And boom! Another term that you want to become very intimate and familiar with is lapse rate. And all lapse rate is, is the temperature measured in the atmosphere as we go up. If you already watch the density altitude, how to calculate it and understand it the easy way, that video is on this channel. Link to it at the end of this video. If you're familiar with that, you've already used lapse rate. That's what we use to calculate the density altitude. Density altitude is simply just a calculation where we're correcting for non-standard temperature. Because we know that a standard rate of temperature, how it's going to actually decrease as we go up, it's going to start off at 15 degrees Celsius because that's standard at sea level. Every thousand feet that we go up, we're going to lose two degrees of Celsius. So we're going to go from 15 degrees to 13 degrees, 13 degrees to 11 degrees. Another thousand feet we go up, we're going to go to nine degrees. That's the standard lapse rate. Used it already to calculate your density altitude. But it's also non-standard lapse rates that you need to be aware of. And non-standard means anything except that standard. It may lose at three degrees Celsius on a scale. It may be at start at 15 degrees, and then it may a thousand feet, it may go to 12 degrees. So it may lose three degrees in just 1,000 feet. Then the next thousand, it may lose seven degrees. Then the next thousand, four degrees. So as you can see, just think about that standard issue is every is two degrees every thousand feet while the non-standard is doing something funky. That's beyond that two, th that two degrees every thousand feet. That's how you want to kind of remember that. And then of course there can be other non-standard versions where it may actually kind of cool at a slower rate, like 15, 14, that's all non-standard, right? Because it's supposed to be two degrees every thousand and then 13, and then it may actually go back up. You may experience this sometime if you ever kind of going on a hike up a mountain and it's kind of warm and it's getting cooler and cooler, then it kind of gets hot and then it gets cooler and cooler again, that would be in that kind of like non-standard lapse rate kind of area where as you're going up, it's not necessarily cooling and losing it gradually at two degrees. It's doing this funky little thing as it's going up and down. So anything that's standard, you stand at two degrees. Every thousand feet, I'm gonna lose two degrees of Celsius. Anything that's not doing that, that's doing something a little bit different, whether it's temperature inversions like we talked about here on that last one, or some other little funky thing where it's doing like minus three degrees every thousand feet, that's considered non-standard. It's very important to understand this lapse rate, particularly the standard and non-standard versions that can occur, because that's gonna give you clues as to what's happening in terms of a stable or unstable air and be a great predictor of what can happen going forward when you're trying to predict these forecasts. A hey, bing bong. A hey, the last term that you want to be familiar with is adiabatic cooling. In adiabatic cooling, you're going to have an existing lapse rate. It's either going to be standard or non-standard. But within that lapse rate, you can also have some something else happening. Weather is just so complex. It's a beautiful thing like that. So on top of the existing lapse rate that's happening, you can have this uplifting action that's also happening that's causing the atmosphere to cool at a more predictable kind of rate. And that would be adiabatic cooling. So it would be kind of like something forcing air up. Just think about if a strong wind was blowing and it was blowing right into a mountain. You got a mountain right here and you got this strong wind blowing. So when that wind blows and it hits that mountain, what is that wind gonna do? It has no way to go but up. So it's like forcing that air up. And when it forces that air up like that, it's going to cool at a very predictable rate. And that rate is usually going to be about three degrees Celsius every thousand feet. So if you had like a, say a balloon that started off on the ground and you released it and it got caught up in that uplifting kind of action, 17 degrees Celsius could be right there at the beginning. And then it'll cool at that nice predictable three degree rate, 14 degrees Celsius. And then from there, 11 degrees Celsius. So as it goes up, it's expanding 
and it's getting cooler and cooler, and those mo and those air molecules are starting to happen there, and it's going to expand and cool at that rate. So these are kind of like the things you want to familiarize yourself with. All these, as things go up in the air, it, molecules change and things change in the atmosphere. This is very important to note because this is going to determine exactly how stable or unstable the air is going to be going forward. So familiarize yourself with a lot of these terms, adiabatic cooling, lapse rate, and of course, temperature and dew point and understand not only what they mean, but the impact that they can have on the atmosphere. A hey, boom, if you want another example of adiabatic cooling, think about being back at that backyard barbecue and working with that propane gas tank. And when you start off with that propane gas tank in the very beginning, when it's being pumped up and when it's being filled up, it may be nice and hot and warm. But then when you got it connected to that grill and you release those gases and it's been running for a while and things have been releasing, what's happening to that tank? The remaining gas that's in there is getting more comfortable. Why? Because gas is being left, it's been laid back and can stretch out a little bit, it can expand and it can cool down and you start to see that tank get a lot cooler and you also start to see condensation starting to form. That's an example of adiabatic cooling. Hey, boom! Now you see what an ice cold beer, a propane gas tank, and a balloon can tell you about weather. A lot. Make sure you feel familiarize right yourself with these terms before we get into that stable versus unstable air. Let go. Don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free, fun videos about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Let's go. Love you one time.